catch the lion. Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. It's Game of Thrones season eight, the final season. It's that time winter is here. And we're going to be talking about Game of Thrones season eight, episode two, the preview. We're going to break it down. We're going to break down the preview, how we do when we break down shit. Firstly, I just want to thank you for being you and being obsessed with Game of Thrones as much as I am. I love you, sweet summer family, and and I appreciate you. Anyways, let's talk about this preview for episode two. So the preview kicks off with Daenerys talking to Jaime Lannister about all of the stories Viserys used to tell her about the man that murdered their father, the Mad King. The Mad King was killed by Jaime Lannister during Robert's Rebellion. Jaime Lannister was Kingsguard to the Mad King, and that is how Jaime got the name Kingslayer. Kingslayer. What a king he was. It looks like Jaime is having a trial at Winterfell. The Great Hall is set up almost like a trial, but I'm not sure that it's entirely a trial. I think it's more like a war council. Jamie isn't in handcuffs like Tyrion was at his trial, but Jamie doesn't have his sword. But Jamie not having Whittle's Whale doesn't mean that he's on trial. It just means like they don't trust him enough for him to be walking around with a sword. Kind of like when John went to Dragonstone, John gave over Longclaw. But anyway, the Great Hall is set up to me like a war council. There are three tables. One at the head of the room, Daenerys, Jon, and Sansa are at this table. The table to the right is all of the northern folk, the northern leaders, the lords and ladies of great houses, I guess. I guess you could kind of say it's like Jon and Sansa's northern allies. Davos, Lyanna Mormont, Lord Jan Royce, Alice Karstark, and Brienne of Tarth. Now at the left, we have Daenerys' allies. Tyrion, Varys, Masande, and Jorah. Jamie is in the center of the room like he's on trial. But if you look at the table to the left, between Tyrion and Varys, it seems there is an empty seat, which is likely the seat that was made for Jamie when he was set to arrive with the Lannister army. So that seat is likely Jamie's seat. However, that doesn't mean that he isn't on trial. So Daenerys seems like she is absolutely pissed. But I think her anger may be misdirected here. Her anger likely comes from the fact that Cersei has betrayed her. Cersei tricked her. Jaime has shown up without the Lannister army and has made Daenerys and her hand look like fools in front of all of these northerners that Daenerys is trying to win the respect of. And I feel like now she's going to take all of her anger out towards Cersei on Jaime. So when Jaime and Daenerys met in the Dragon Pit in Season 7, in my opinion, there wasn't much animosity between them. It didn't seem like she hated him. But in Episode 2, it seems like she's full of rage and she's been dreaming for years of all the ways that she would murder him when she's seen him. I'm like Season 8, Episode 1, Bran, like, um, we don't have time for this shit. We don't have time for all this. Let's say that she does put Jamie on trial for killing her father, the Mad King. Well, this is spades and Jamie has the big joker. And let me explain. Firstly, Jamie shows up in the north to defend the realm against the real enemy. And to show your gratitude, Daenerys, you put him on trial for killing your father. That type of shit does not inspire loyalty. Let's be clear here. Nobody in the north likes Jamie Lannister. But to kill someone that has came to fight for you against the real enemy doesn't inspire loyalty. Also, a lot of people in the story are comparing Daenerys to her father. People don't like the Mad King either. They hate his fucking guts. The Mad King murdered one of the previous lords of Winterfell and his heir. He burned Rickard Stark alive while Brandon Stark choked to death trying to save him. Have you forgotten what happened to our grandfather? The Mad King invited him to King's Landing and roasted him alive. 
Why dredge up all this bullshit when you don't really want to be associated with your father, the Mad King, and all of his bullshit? You want to separate yourself from that. You're different from that. So that's one part of it. I think that's a dilemma that Daenerys is going to have to deal with. But also, it looks like Jamie snaps his head and he's looking at someone shocked. He's shocked. He can't believe it. That's, that's, that's the vibe I'm getting. It looks like he's looking at Sansa. But no, he's not looking at Sansa because Sansa isn't the only person at the far right of that table. He's looking at Bran. Bran is seated to the right of Sansa in his wheelchair. Bran is going to tell that entire room what really happened when Jamie killed the Mad King. Why Jamie really killed the Mad King. If you think back to season six, when Bran got that big download of information, he was shown many things. All of these things have significance. He wasn't shown these things randomly for no reason. These are all things that will become important. Now, the most prominent thing that Bran seen in this vision, the thing that everyone talked about immediately after the episode like crazy was the burn them all sequence. He's seen the pyromancers making wildfire. He's seen barrels of wildfire under King's Landing. He's seen the Mad King give the command to burn them all. He's seen Jamie kill the Mad King to save the people of King's Landing. Bran is going to say all of this shit. Just like he told the truth about Littlefinger last season during Littlefinger's trial. This season, Bran will do the same for Jamie, only this time it's to Jamie's benefit. Bran knows the truth. He knows that had Jamie not killed the Mad King, one million people would have died. Also, Brienne is there. Brienne is there to corroborate this shit. Jamie told Brienne the truth at Harrenhal. Burn them all, he kept saying. Burn them all. So Brienne can vouch for Bran's story should Daenerys not believe Bran or just think that Bran is some little insane crackhead. This is not a good look for Daenerys. She's going to be seen as the queen who tried to prosecute a man that saved millions of lives after Bran is done talking. I don't think Daenerys is going to like Bran after Bran is done talking. Anyway, likely Daenerys is going to be pissed at the outcome of this meeting of the minds. But the general gist of all of this is that Jaime is more important than I think any of us think that he is. Jaime Lannister has some kind of huge role to play. First of all, Bran has waited up for him all night long. From the night until the day, he has sat outside waiting for Jaime. But even more to the point, in that season 6 download, that massive download that Bran gets, the thing he is shown seems to be highly, highly important in the wars to come. He's only shown things that are important for the wars to come. The Night King, Jon Snow, Ned and Lyanna, Daenerys, and Jaime. So why Jaime? Jaime has some very, very significant role to play. Bran Stark, he's not human. Not really. He is something much greater. He's the Three-Eyed Raven. The Three-Eyed Raven is the ancient enemy of the Night King. So the Three-Eyed Raven is only worried about defeating the Night King. So if he's worried about Jaime, enough to wait up for him all night and save his life, and then Jaime has a huge part to play in defeating the Night King. So Jamie pushed Bran out of a window, tried to kill him, and ended up making him a cripple. Bran has no reason to protect Jamie. He has every reason to want him dead, but he doesn't. This is interesting, and I can't wait to see how this plays out and what Jamie's big role is going to be in the endgame. So I did a video a few weeks ago where I analyzed Jamie's weirwood dream about Rhaegar, and I just think what I said in that video may be what's going to happen. So I'll link that video in the comments. I'll pin it to the comments below in case you missed it. They also show some more clips that look like Sansa and Daenerys are still not getting along. Daenerys says he never should have trusted Cersei, and Sansa says you shouldn't have either. Daenerys is talking about Tyrion. Sansa doesn't let it slide without checking her and like, no, you too. Yeah, Daenerys nor Tyrion shouldn't have trusted Cersei. Daenerys was taking counsel from her hand, though. I bet if Daenerys had the same experiences with Cersei as Sansa did, Daenerys wouldn't have trusted Cersei either. Actually, Daenerys would have probably fed Cersei to Drogon. But Daenerys was trying to do the right thing and take counsel from her hand. This is going to drive a wedge even further between Tyrion and Daenerys. But the speech from Sansa to Daenerys, 
I don't think Sansa is being as snarky as she sounds. Actually, she's kind of reminding me of Olena. I'm getting Olena Tyrell vibes from Sansa. Olena told Daenerys, your hand is a clever man, but you're a dragon. Be a dragon. Stop listening to clever men. I've outlived them all. Blah, 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 blah. That's the vibe I'm getting from Sansa. I think this conversation may end better than it starts, to be honest. Like, I, I think... I think Sansa and Daenerys may end up getting along. The North is preparing for a battle. It looks like at the end of the episode, the Night King will be right outside of Winterfell. And episode three will pick up at the start of the Battle of Winterfell. Jorah does indeed have Heartsbane. Heartsbane is the family Valyrian steel sword of House Tarly. Sam likely gave that sword to Jorah because he built a bond with Jorah over Grayscale. Jon and Daenerys are in the crypts of Winterfell. And this becomes interesting because Jon Snow is likely at Lyanna's statue this time. He now knows that Lyanna is his mother. And he now knows that Rhaegar is his father. He knows that he is Aegon Targaryen. And in walks Daenerys, his lover and his auntie. I'm so excited to see what this conversation is about down here. I'm wondering if John tells her right at this moment that I'm your I'm your nephew and I'm Aegon Targaryen. Or does he wait and just start acting different towards her? The, 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 I, I can't wait to see how that's going to play out. Arya has a bow back in her hands. We haven't seen Arya with a bow since season one. I mean, how many weapons does one need? My goodness. She has a needle, a Valyrian steel dagger, a dragon glass dagger, the staff weapon she asked Gendry to make her, and now a bow. I mean, I guess she's ready for whatever. Like, she's ready for whatever. She'll pull up. Maybe she's just training people for archery, like training girls in Winterfell to get ready for this battle. But it looks like she's inside when she has this bow. The shot of Jon coming out of the Winterfell gates seems to be the arrival of Tormund, Beric, and Dolores Ed. They will be arriving to Winterfell, letting everyone know about what they have seen at the last hearth, if Bran hasn't already seen it. Poor Ned Umber. John and Tormund and them are talking in the yard. They seem to think that the Night King will arrive before the sun comes up tomorrow. In the books, the White Walkers only come out at night. They hate the sun and the touch of it. So during the day, they aren't mobile. That's why they, they did the most damage through the long night because the sun didn't come up for like years and years. So they was able to just run wild and rampant. Anyways, there's this shot of Jon Snow, Dolores Ed, and Samuel Tarly on the battlements of Winterfell. And I'm sure they're going to have a pretty awesome conversation up there. It's the original three, the three watchers on the wall, the swords in the darkness, almost all of what's left of the Night's Watch. There are more shots for the preparations for battle, the contraptions that they will be using, Grey Worm and Masande's kiss goodbye, and finally, a shot of Tyrion on the battlements. The shot of Tyrion is so ominous. Tyrion also seems to be in armor. Every character that we know and love will be in danger. They will be in danger of dying. I'm very excited for episode two. I cannot wait to see though what goes down between Jamie and Bran and the whole burn them all thing and Daenerys. I, I, I can't wait for that. But what do you think? What do you think we can expect in episode two? As always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my Sweet Summer children, have a good day.